You know, I've gotten a lot of people ask me over the years how to manipulate text, how to cut out somebody's name in one piece. Um, and it's just really so easy in Lightburn. And today we're going to talk about a couple of the ways that you can do that. So let's jump into Lightburn and get started. Now, here in Lightburn, I've got my name. We're also going to talk today about how to visualize a layered project. We'll do that a little bit later in the video. So here I've got my name both in capital letters and in small letters. And this is Borales font, in case you're interested. Not one of my favorites. People ask me, how do I get these letters to join and look good? And that's really easy to do. There's a couple of ways. Let's start with the first way where you can cut this out of a piece of wood and have all the letters join. The first way is so simple. It's just a simple offset over here on the left side. So we'll click on offset and you just set the offset distance over here. So you're going to want to do outer shapes only, select resulting objects, and that's it. Outward, round, because we have pretty much round text here. And you'll just adjust this size to whatever size that you want. And I think that looks pretty good right there, but you can make it any size you want. And then say, OK. Now, once you've said OK, it's already selected. So let's come down to the bottom over here and let's put this on the red, which is the cut path. I always use red for cut because it makes sense. Red is cut <laughs> to me anyway. So now we've got it. And what's going to happen is you can change this layer to fill if you wanted to. We'll just go fill. And now you'll see the laser will engrave this first and then come back and cut it out. And you've got all one piece. So that's one quick way to do it. Let's go back into line and let's undo everything that we just did. And look at the second way that we can do this. And the second way is by automatic welding. So if we come up here to the top of the screen, you're going to see H space and V space right there. We're going to concentrate on H space. So we're going to lower the H spacing, which means horizontal spacing. And we're just going to start lowering it until we get a connection. I'm just going to keep clicking until everything connects. And there we've got everything connected. Almost. There we go. Right there. So everything is now connected. But it looks kind of funky. Right? <laughs> so what do we do here? It's very, very simple. The only thing that we're going to do here is add definition. We're going to add score lines in here to score the different letters. And I've done this before on my our Father Prayer Cross. Uh, I think I have 470 different lines in there. So we're going to come up here on the top left to the pencil tool. I'm going to click on that pencil tool. And we're just going to zoom in and come right here. See where it turns into a bullseye? Just like that. Click. Now we've got a line. We're going to come over here till it turns into a bullseye again. Right on the corner. Click. And now we've got our second line. And now there are two things we can do here to get rid of the line tool. We can either right click or press the escape key. I'll press the escape key. Now we're going to come to the selector tool, select that line and go into node edit right here on the top left side. So we're going to click on node edit and you'll see there are two nodes to this line. We are not concerned with any of that. Don't worry, we're not doing node editing. <laughs> I'm just going to come around the middle right here and click and hold on this line and drag it to where I want. Select it. And now I'll put that on a different layer. So we'll put that on the black for now. And maybe you can't really see the black. Uh, let me put that on the on the pink. There we go. So now that is just a score and we'll talk about scores in just a moment. But now you can see the definition of the R. 
We're going to do the same exact procedure for the C. So go back to the line tool, click, click, right click, select, node edit, and just grab it somewhere and bend it out to the point where you think looks best, which is right about there. Now we go back to the selector. Now you can start seeing the definition in these names. And there's not much more to do to this. Again, line tool, click, click, right click, select, node edit, and make that C look a little better. Something like that. Now you also have handles here when you do this. So you can also use the handle to make fine tune adjustments. Okay, so now we go back to the selector tool. There our C is defined. And the last one is going to be the H. And I just have to do the same thing here. Click, click, right click. And I don't even have to make an adjustment to that. So now you see we've got everything separated. So this outer line here, I'm going to put on my red line, and that's my cut path. And then this line in here, and actually let me, uh, let me select that layer. So I'll shift and click on that layer to select it all and put it on the black so that you can see it better now. Okay, so these are going to be score lines. All of these are going to be score lines. The rule of thumb that I use for my score lines is whatever I use to cut this out. So I'm using the Lasermatic 30, let's say, and I'm going to cut this out of three millimeter plywood at 600 millimeters per minute and 100% power. Well, whatever I use to cut, I double the speed for the score. So if I used 600 millimeters per minute here, I'm going to use 1200 mil millimeters per minute here and leave the power the same at 100% power. That way we'll get a nice cutout all the way around and we'll get nice score lines in here and you'll be able to read the name. So that's just how easy this is. Now let's move on to the next one. So let's get rid of this guy. And we'll come down here to the lowercase version of this same exact font. Now, there are a couple things here. This is not attached. This is not attached. So let's go ahead and fix that. So let's select this. And let's come up here to Edit. And we're going to come down to Convert to Path. And what this does is it will reveal the, all of the nodes that are in here and it'll no longer be text. It'll now be a vector graphic. So we're going to click on Convert to Path. Then we're going to come to Node Edit. And don't worry, this is not hard to do. Uh, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time doing this. I'm going to show you quick and easy how we're going to connect this. So you, here you see the nodes. Everything in red is a node. All I'm going to do is drag from left to right over those nodes. And you see they're all red now and selected. But we're, I'm going to always drag from left to right, and everything that's within that box will get selected. Now, all I have to do is just grab one of them and drag it down like that. And that's it. So now that we've done that, the way to attach them, if we go back to the selector tool and come down here to the scissors, we're going to grab this scissor and we're going to say, get rid of this line and get rid of this line. And we are done with that. So now that piece is now attached. This is all one path all the way around. If I select it, you'll see you have the Vegas lights going all the way around the outside. So now the last problem that we have with this one is the eye. So to fix this eye, all we have to do is select it, use our arrow keys, move it down, to a point where it overlaps right there. And that's pretty much it there. We can come back to our scissor tool again, click, click on this line, 
and we're done. Now we have one complete name. We took it from unbridged script to bridged script to all one piece. So this little piece will cut out by itself here first, and then it'll come around and cut everything else out and you'll have one name. Isn't that simple? And I get lots and lots of people that ask me all the time about how to do this. I probably have a half a dozen private YouTube videos where I've done quick videos for people to help them out with this. I figured I may as well make one video so I can just point people to the one video. So there you go. Now let's talk about the second thing that I wanted to talk about today, and that is visualizing a project. For today's project, I went over to Cuddle and I grabbed this project really quickly. And you could put any name. All I did was put my name in there. You can put any name you want in there and it will automatically fill it in for you. So that's all I did. I put my name in here, click download. I'll put a link in the description if you guys want to go check out Cuddle. I have an affiliate link for them and they have just tons and tons of SVGs there that are just quick clicks. You know, fill out a name, fill out a thickness of the material, whatever the case may be. So now I've got my project from there with my name. Here it is. So how did I visualize it like this? Well, when you're doing layered projects, you want to sometimes visualize it. And so you know how it's going to look. So you don't want it to be like, this is all cut layers, right? But I want to see how the, the final project looks. If I had this just in line and I put this one into line, I can't really tell because this will all be red. These are all cuts. This is a score in the middle, so that would be like blue, but the rest of this would be all red. And this would be all red, and there's my score lines down there. But I'm not sure how this goes together. So all I did was choose the colors that I want for each layer. So I wanted the top to be orange, like you saw in the Cuddle program, but I wanted to change the background to black. So I'll just put this into fill. Now I know exactly how it looks. And then this one, I'll paint whatever color I want to go on top. Now, if you're wondering how I got the screen to fill like this, if you come up here to Window, click on Window, you'll see View Style right here. You have Wireframe, Coarse, and Smooth. Then you have Filled Coarse and Filled Smooth. And then here's your shortcut. Alt Shift W to switch between them. I usually keep mine in filled unless I'm designing. When I'm in design mode, I'll put it into wireframe like that. And then I'll, I'll design the project. In this case, it's pre designed. And then as I go, I'll go ahead and put it into fill and I'll change my layers to the colors that I want the final project to be. And this makes it so much easier because you can visualize it. Now, there is one step further that I go. I go to the snipping tool in Windows, and uh, I think in Mac, you probably have a similar tool, or you can do uh, a print screen. I'm gonna click New, and I'm just gonna drag over this like that, and now, I've got this, I can print this, I can leave it on my desktop, I can use this for whatever I need to use it for so I know what color or what layers. And you may have more different pieces on your layer. So this makes it easy for you to finish and assemble your project. And talking about assembly, one of the things that uh, I like to do, I like to do this two different ways. So coming directly from the software Cuddle, this will be slightly smaller than this down here. So this is just a score, just telling you where to put this cutout down here. So if you take a look up here, the width 2.8025, and then if we look at this one, 2.8765. This one is slightly larger. When you put this on top, 
on the finished project, you won't see any score lines. It makes it easy to line up. You finished all your wood. You're assembling it. You put this on top. You put some glue down in, in here where the score lines are. And then you position this one until you don't see any score lines whatsoever. So that's one way. Sometimes I do it that way. Other times I do it in reverse. So I'll make this one up here slightly larger so that I can see the outline around these words. And that'll give it more definition. So two ways to do that. But I do like to visualize all my projects when I'm making my layered projects. And when you have a bunch of different pieces on here that are going to be different colors, like for instance, my my uh, Valentine gnome, my USA gnome, things like that. I always put the different parts onto colored layers that I know that's the finish that I want. So this makes it very simple using the color palette. So there are more reasons to use the color palette than just for settings. And you can use it for visualization as well. What do you think about that? I'll put links down in the description to uh, the Cuddle website. It'll be an affiliate link. It won't cost you a penny more, but I'll let them know that I sent you. Uh, you're going to love that website because they have tons and tons of SVGs, SVG files that you can customize each one without knowing any code, without knowing anything about node editing, without knowing anything about welding or anything else. You can just get your projects done in a couple of clicks of a mouse. Real great website. I love it. I've been using it a lot lately. Um, also, I want to remind everyone about my Amazon store. That link is down in the description. Uh, I've, I update that regularly. So it's not like most people's Amazon store where you go there and things are out of stock and everything else. I keep it updated as best that I can at least once a week. And uh, you can find all types of laser related products in my online store. I've got laser products. I've got uh, 3D printing products. I've got some computer stuff, everything related to lasers. So it's all in one place. So visit my Amazon store. So that's about it. What do you guys think? Leave me a comment down below. Don't forget to give the video a like and a thumbs up if you like it. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video today as much as I enjoyed making it for you. And as always, I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.